Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Good day. Yes, good day. So as we see here out of RT, are you invading or you're just lost? Russian Navy threatens to ram U.S. warship John McCain after it crosses border near Vladivostok. And this is just one more instance of which we've had so many where we've had mm, just almost like confrontations going on, you know, testing of each other and kind of like poking and prodding. Well, they like to swat the hornet's nest. Yeah, that's another way to put it. It's definitely swatting the hornet's nest. And it's interesting, the timing, too. Yeah, this has been going on really for quite a while. We've had so many cases of planes, Russian planes flying up to Alaska real close and having to be, uh, you know, encountered and sent away. Uh, different ones going on with the Chinese as well. It's It's been pretty tense yeah. in many, many ways all, ac all across the globe. And, you know, right now there's there's a lot of rumors out there of, you know, potential or attack on Iran with the U.S. and Israel. Um, Steve over at Israeli News Live, I think the, his last video, he was talking about that. And I've heard that from numerous sources. And, you know, you could always think that it's politically motivated, which, of course, <laughs> everything tends to be politically motivated. You know, part of the bigger plan going on. Um, where this occurred is right over here. It's Peter the Great Bay, which is really, it's right off the coast of Russia and, and going over towards North Korea as well. And of course the U S has a lot of forces in Japan and it's just one more. It's curious that it's the U S as John McCain as well. Uh, president Trump has actually criticized this ship. So we see a notorious U.S. naval destroyer sparked a diplomatic incident on Tuesday morning after Russia claimed that it had launched an incursion into its territorial waters. The USS John McCain, a specialist combat ship designed to hunt submarines, was operating in the Sea of Japan, also called the East Sea, off the coast of the Russian Far Eastern capital, Vladivostok. Authorities say it was more than two kilometers inside Russia's internationally recognized maritime border. A statement from the Ministry of Defense in Moscow said that the vessel had violated Russian waters and was warned of the unacceptability of its actions by the Udaloy-class destroyer Admiral Venogradov, which had been tailing it. The communique added that sailors had told American ship of the potential of resorting to ramming to force the trespasser out of the territory. U.S. Navy has not issued a response. This is not the first time that the USS John McCain has been involved in high-risk incidents at sea. In 2017, 10 American sailors died after the vessel collided with a Liberian flag tanker, resulting in flooding and putting the warship out of action until October 2019. An investigation into that incident warned of an overly complex touchscreen system used to control the ship's throttle and a lack of training of its crew. Hmm, that doesn't sound good. Named after naval pilot and Republican Senator John McCain, who died in 2018, the ship has repeatedly been singled out for criticism by President Donald Trump. McCain himself had been one of Trump's biggest critics, arguing that his 2016 election campaign had fired up the crazies. The Wall Street Journal reported in 2019 that the White House aides had asked for the ship to be moved out of sight of the president on a trip to Japan in 2019 to avoid angering him. On Tuesday afternoon, however, the commander of the U.S. 7th Fleet claimed the vessel had not been expelled from any nation's territory and had been conducting a so-called Freedom of Navigations operation. In a statement, the uh, American Navy went on to claim that by conducting this operation, the United States demonstrated that these waters are not Russia's territorial sea. They argued that disagreement arises from whether Peter the Great Bay can be considered historic, which would make it subject to different rules under international law and therefore affects Russia's sea border. You know, this is just such a confusing maze. It's set up for mistakes to happen. It is. It, it definitely is. <clears throat> and, uh, you yeah, know, maybe that's all part of the bigger play here. Uh, you know, there's not, if there is a transfer of power on, on the regular timeline uh, that's supposed to, you know, happen, uh, then 
you would think that this would be more of a coasting time, you know, and not starting anything major. But as I said in the earlier video today, I would not be surprised if there was something major that came down. It just feels like there might be some incident, some, you know, something that boils over that can cause uh, further mucking up of everything. And and what's going to happen if someone's really having a bad day and they decide not to back down? Yeah. Well, you know, we've been talking, too, about how the fleet mo movement, and this is out of uh, United States Navy uh, News Fleet Marine Tracker. The fleet movement's been weird lately. You know, not, not what I've... Weird from how long I've watched this, which has been maybe four years. Um, and usually try to check it every Monday when it comes out um, just to see if there's anything unusual and interesting because we, we have seen a ton of activity, abnormal activity around the South China Sea. And, you know, sometimes when things are ramped up in the Middle East, you might have one strike group in here and you might have another one here and another one somewhere else where they could get there kind of quick. Um, but then we saw like nothing right around the election. There was like, it, there was like nothing happening. It, it just seemed unusually quiet. And now it seems like there's an awful lot of, uh, forces over here. And this group is coming westbound. Uh, there's an awful lot of forces very close to North Korea and, and this area w with Russia and China, because you have the Nimitz carrier group over here as well. Uh, the Ronald Reagan's in its home base over in Japan right now. It's been at sea for five months. But it just feels like something could happen. There's rumors, as we said, about a potential Israeli-U.S. strike on Iran to take out their uh, nuclear power plants that are being built. And, you know, Israel's done that before. So it's just curious with the timing going on. The timing is curious. And, and this, this just feels like a lot of forces right here. Um, and then we see Netanyahu flies to Saudi Desert City to meet the Crown Prince and Mike Pompeo. That's interesting. Yeah, the timing here again. You know, if you're winding down, you know, and, and then you have the secretive meetings going on. And... There, uh, recognize there are definitely always factions that want to be war hawks uh, because war is profitable for certain people, certain you know, companies, you know, as we've talked about in World War II and even in World War I, but especially in World War II. I mean, there were companies that were profiting on both sides. And then also there was other industries uh, that were profiting as well, trying to fix everybody that was being uh, wounded. And then, of course, you know, so many got killed. So this was uh, a close secret until this meeting, until the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's flight landed at the western Saudi town of Neom on Sunday night, November 22nd, for a unique rendezvous with Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and the U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Neither side officially confirmed the event, believed to be the first high-level official Israeli-Saudi meeting after many years of secret relations between the two countries. The private jet that carried the Prime Minister to the Red Sea coastal town Sunday evening returned him to Israel five hours later. The meeting between them was published in advance. The only surprise was Netanyahu's arrival, meaning, you know, Pompeo was going to meet with the uh, Saudi prince and then Netanyahu had happened to come. It was interesting. He was accompanied by Mossad director Yossi Cohen. Prime Minister's office did not confirm or deny the meeting took place. An excuse was made for postponing the coronavirus cabinet meeting from Sunday to Monday. So hours before he took off, Netanyahu said in a speech, President-elect Biden's administration must not go back to 2015 nuclear deal with Iran. This was seen as a signal that the prime minister will go back to the highly vocal campaign he conducted against the nuclear deal with which six world powers led by the Obama administration, of which Biden was vice president, signed with Iran in 2015 and from which Donald Trump withdrew in 2018. Secretary Pompeo has been making the rounds of U.S. Middle East allies, most significantly Israel, the UAE, and Saudi Arabia, in the past two weeks. And what appears to be his last major project for the Trump administration, the establishment of a firm regional 
pro-U.S. security pact for countering Iran's nuclear weapons program, as well as its violent drive for regional hegemony. On Friday, U.S. Special Advisor to Iran, uh, on Iran, Elliot Abrams, issued a blunt warning, Iran and its proxies would be sorry for any military or terrorist activities that kill Americans. Muscular support was provided by a heavy, long-range U.S. Air Force B-52 bomber flying over the Middle East in, in the weekend, escorted by freighter jets. So, you know, this also, one of the other things I wanted to mention about this was uh, the Nimitz was part of a group uh, that was carrying out exercises with India, Japan, and Australia to kind of counterbalance uh, the rising Chinese influence in the South China Sea. And um, I just I just feel this is important. We don't like to focus on things that are, uh, quote-unquote, uh, fear-mongering, but yet it just feels like there could be something to all this as we see U.S. posts B-52 bombers to Mideast ahead of troop drawdown because... You know, they're going to be trying to draw down and draw out of Afghanistan. And, um, you know, this is something that President Trump wanted to accomplish. And so everybody has their pawns in play, it feels. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I don't understand this like super well, but it does feel like that climax is coming up. Well, yeah, because, you know, as you know, even even though we know there's uh, puppeteers at the very, very high, highest levels, there's always the appearances of certain agendas. And, you know, as, as we know, um, well, we have basically, you know, Biden, who would go back to a normal business relationship with China instead of that hard line. And we could look at that as, as I've said for years, you know, there's been this shift in power uh, heading to China from the elite. The elite, that's what they've had planned, is shifting power over to China as China grows in power. And so, you know, when we look at the potential incoming administration, it would be kind of business as usual to what was going on. Uh, it, there's different factions, it appears, in these groups that want different things, even though the puppeteers uh, at the top, you know, have a master plan underway. When we go all the way back to the Sumerian, the Sumerian people and the Anunnaki, and we see that each one of the city-states had its own god, and they seem to be always at war with each other. And um, it doesn't seem like, you know, these things ever end with these factions. No, they don't. So just very, very interesting. And then we have all the flyovers. Like last night, we were hearing so many planes. And, and, you know, we shouldn't hear planes where we are like this. You know, there's not that much that comes over here. Um, and others, too. I know, uh, I think it was the range over in the UK was making a comment that she was hearing planes all night, too. And, and we've we've gotten it from so many of you guys out there that there's just been nonstop flights and then you know, nonstop military flights the last month. And then we saw all the war game activity over in, when we were over in Vegas, we, we, we actually saw those gigantic dog, like yes. robots. <laughs> That's what they are. You know, D-A-R-P-A, um, that are the size of, of trucks. You know, uh, there was four of them on a tractor trailer and it was like shocking to see these things. And it probably was going, you know, on or off the military base. Um, really wild stuff going on, guys. Yeah, it didn't feel good or look good. So as usual, just be prepared. You know, just be prepared as best possible for hunkering down or anything that comes. Keep sending out your positive energy, your prayers. Let's pray for peace. Let's pray for a great awakening upon this planet. Let's envision this awakening. And, you know, let's just send out the signal. Um uh, you know, we're not going to consent to nonstop wars. No. We're we're just you know we're we're on to the game. Yes, we are. And also, thank you for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon, guys. We couldn't do it without you. Thank you so much. God bless and namaste. Namaste.